Hmm. Hmm. A second Clinton presidency would be a disaster. Hillary Clinton is a deeply impressive individual. She has served her country well in multiple capacities, but she should not be president. Almost all two-term presidencies end up in a storm of scandal, though of differing degrees. Bush had Scooter Libby and Jack Abramoff. Bill Clinton had Whitewater and Lewinsky. Reagan had Iran-Contra. And you shouldn't need to be reminded how Nixon ended up. Those people have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. The reason for this is simple. A presidency is not just one person. It is made up of dozens of people that surround the president. When they first get there, they come with all of the vigor of a winning campaign and the passion to make whatever change they ran on. As the energy fades, people begin to burn out and think harder about what comes next. They get jaded and they often get greedy. They fall into bed with lobbyists or they lose track of what's appropriate to their office and exert themselves in illegal ways. The transition from idealist to power junkie is normal. That's why we put term limits into the Constitution after FDR's four terms. Mrs. Clinton certainly has her own people, but it is impossible to avoid overlap. She was arguably the most important factor in Bill Clinton's election. The old administration is one she helped build. If she runs, there will be some new blood, but it will be placed in an infrastructure that has been nationally powerful for 24 years. If we were to elect Hillary Clinton, we would not be getting the first year of an administration. At best, we'd be getting the ninth. We've gotten the fifth year of a presidency before. One of the main factors in making George W. Bush's presidency so damaging was the fact that he had so many of his father's old cronies to draw on. Rumsfeld and Cheney in particular had been running the U.S. government in different capacities for decades. They were not going to change Washington, D.C. They were Washington, D.C. They could instantly make the government work for them and their chosen friends and corporations. If we brought back the Clintons, the situation would be the same but worse. Mrs. Clinton's husband and daughter run the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative. These organizations do some extraordinary work but they do so by working the levers of power and money on a national and international level. The amount of money flowing through these institutions is staggering. The foundation takes in tens to hundreds of millions of dollars annually, and Wikipedia estimates that the Clinton Global Initiative manages charitable commitments amounting to over $72 billion. This money has led to some incredible good works but it has also led to some extraordinary opportunities for what can only be described as corruption. The New Republic and the New York Times Magazine have done some excellent reporting on these issues. Please click the links in the description below. The articles describe many troubling things, but the most troubling would have to be the fact that there is a core of people throughout financial, governing, and charitable elites who owe their entire professional lives to the Clintons. That kind of power and loyalty is just not good for a republic. Our first female president would also be our most imperial to date. A few of you might be thinking this could be a good thing. After eight years of Bush and eight years of a sometimes ineffectual Obama, don't progressives deserve their own imperial presidency? But what about Clinton makes you think she would do anything to support progressive views? What is the Clinton record on our bloated and corrupt financial sector? What is the Clinton record on the war on drugs and the American prison industry? What is the Clinton record on the war on terror? There is no progressive Clinton record. Well, abortion rights would be pretty safe. Probably. A second Clinton presidency would be a disaster for the United States. Please don't let it happen. Please subscribe. In the four years since the inspectors left, intelligence reports show that Saddam Hussein has worked to rebuild his chemical and biological weapons stock, his missile delivery capability, and his nuclear program. He has also given aid, comfort, and sanctuary to terrorists, including Al-Qaeda members. It is clear, however, that if left unchecked, 
Saddam Hussein will continue to increase his capacity to wage biological and chemical warfare and will keep trying to develop nuclear weapons. Should he succeed in that endeavor, he could alter the political and security landscape of the Middle East, which as we know all too well, affects American security. This is a very difficult vote. This is probably the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Any vote that might lead to war should be hard. But I cast it with conviction.